And we're back with another episode of QGIS Road to Nerdvana. This is episode 32, the QGIS Animation Workbench Preview. Uh, I'm Tim Sutton and I'm a self-confessed geo-nerd. And I wanted to just make this little recording just to show you some things I've been working on for building animations using QGIS. So um, let's switch over to my screen. Everything I'm showing you here is very early in the development, so it definitely is not ready for prime time and it's got bugs and things. Um, um, so just bear that in mind while I'm, while I'm demonstrating here. But um, what I've built is basically um, an, a plugin for QGIS that will let you generate um, animations by moving over a point layer or um, also creating like a spinning a spinning sphere and the point the spinning sphere that's a bit of a mouthful is broken at the moment I think so I'm not going to try to demonstrate that now but I'm going to show you kind of how the um, the point to point animation works so the, the idea is you've got a point layer like this and you want to sort of jump from one point to the next but fly fly through them so imagine you sort of like um, uh, you start zoomed in and you fly and you zoom out and as you're zooming out you're also panning over and you sort of zoom into the next point and then visit that point and then zoom out again and um, so I want to replicate something like this and um, maybe use some sort of natural or interesting animation effects as you're zooming in and out so that they're not just linearly um, zooming out and in and also on the pan side it could be like instead of just panning and like in a straight line between these two points we could sort of pan like let's say you start here we could sort of pan like this and I don't know come come to the next point to make it a bit more interesting and then sort of pan like this um, uh, over to the next point and so on so um, that's the idea is to create kind of an environment for that um, uh, and so here's the plugin. Um, and what it allows you to do is set some options. Like I said, the sphere one, I'm not going to try to show you now because that creates a sort of spinning globe effect, but it's probably not going to work. Um, the first thing you can do is choose a layer, like a point layer. I've just taken out three points because it's probably going to crash if I, if I do the full set. Um, and then you can choose the mode and then these easings. So easings are basically those natural movements that we want to try to recreate for, for panning and for zooming. You can specify them separately. So you can see these, this little legend here. Um, you can see the preview of what the easing is going to do. So if I change here, there's all different easings. If you look at the behavior of the yellow one as I choose different options here, you can see that one, it slows down a lot at the end. Well, this one it does like a crazy elastic bouncing <laughs> or what have you um this one does like a circular motion and uh, so we can set for both the panning and the zooming we can set different behaviors um uh, some of them probably won't make a lot of sense and maybe even I'll, I'll remove some of them later i'll just try some random ones and we can see what it does. So, so you've got those settings for the easings and then you've got the scale ranges which are the minimum and maximum scales that you want to um, zoom to, uh, zoom into and zoom out for. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm just going from 15 million to let's go to like one million, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then you can say how many animation steps should be used between the traversal from one point to another. So if I do 300 steps, it will basically divide the distance between two points by 300 and then pan like across those 300 steps. And then also when it arrives at the point, by the way, I've made nice tooltips that explain all these things. When it arrives at the point, um, you can then also hover at the point and wait for a few seconds we're shooting at 30 frames per second so 300 would mean like 10 seconds of footage basically for each of these things uh, and then this is an option to reuse if you're doing multiple runs and you want to reuse images where they already exist you can do that possibly i'll remove that in the future and then what kind of output you want a gif or a mp4 
Um, I've put a whole lot of magic in there to try to compress the GIF as much as possible and um, the MP4 to do things like um, deal with uh, if you've got the odd number of frames which makes FFmpeg uh, collapse and die and whatever you so there's some nice parameters set for when those are generated. The output folder I haven't implemented it yet so there's nothing much to see there so, so let's give it a run and when I run it what it's going to do is use um, QGIS's task manager and a huge thanks to Niall Dawson who's been giving me some very valuable tips along the way about how to use the task manager for doing this. So um, the idea is that instead of just sequentially rendering everything, rendering everything in a sort of a blocking serial queue, um, we just create a pool of tasks that need to be done. And uh, we put all the tasks into the task manager and then it, it where it can in parallel, just renders things. Um, and I put, put some logic to have a, like a, a finite sized pool so that you don't try to um, render all 10,000 jobs at the same time, for example. You can see the, <laughs> the visit video preview showing now of the, um, of the actual result here with some effects that I've got in there by uh, showing uh, the kinds of things that we can do. And I'll explain a little bit how we did that in a second. Um, so that's another feature of the of the app is or the plugin has got this embedded video player so that you can actually see the preview directly. You can also see while it's playing that bounce effect that I chose here because I've got this out bounce mode enabled. Um, so that means that um, as it's zooming in, it does that sort of bounce effect. If you want to, you can play it again just to have another look. Um, so yeah, so it pulls the task it tries to run things in parallel to do it as efficiently as possible um, and then when it's finished it will have written a folder full of little image files or might be medium sized <laughs> image files depending on how big your scene is uh, and then it turns those into a gif or, a, or, a, or an image um, so there are a bunch of um, or well, there's four at the moment project variables that get set as well so I'm just going to close here and we can come back and look at that in a second um, so when you when you run the the the, the plugin, um, if you go look in the project variables um, section here in your QGIS project, you'll see that these four variables here are um, managed by the plugin. So the first one is the current animation action, which could be none, or it could be panning, or it could be zooming. So you can write some renderer rules to say, well, okay, I only want to want to symbolize something if it's busy panning, but not if it's zooming in or the other way around. Um, oh, sorry, not I, sh I should have said it's uh, panning or uh, hovering. So when it's like at the point, it's in hover mode, and then you could have different cartography for when it's hovering over a point compared to when it's traveling between two points. Um, and then the current frame uh, is the frame within the, um, the traverse or the panning tell you how far along the pan motion it is. Uh, the current point ID tells you which point it's busy zooming towards. Um, and the frames per point, uh, so I think the current frame is the total number of frames. I actually forget now if you go check what I said there. And then the frames per point is how many points uh, um, potentially you could have for that, or well, that would be used to generate that point animation. So. If I've got, uh, if I set it to 300 before in the interface, that would be 300, and then the current frame is 150. That means it's halfway along the traversal between the two points. So with those, and sorry, I botched the <laughs> explanation a bit there, but those ones are then uh, available for your expressions. So um, if I go and look, for example, here, I've got um, the full color for the background of the circle. I don't know if it's so uh, clear to see, but if you um, you zoom up the canvas a bit, you'll see that I've got a circle around the um, uh, the side, around the edge of the, the point, and I can change that color based on the expression. So, um, for example, here I've said um, um, if the current point ID is matched to the ID of this point, so basically I'm checking are we busy zooming to this point, um, and the current animation action is hovering then draw it in red, otherwise draw it in this sort of whitish gray color. So that's one way I can use that project variable that I've set. Um, 
Another example is in the labeling here, where I've got um, uh, conditional labeling to say if we're in hovering mode, then um, put, uh, put the label on basically and use the name field for that. So then it will only show um, the label if we're in hover mode. And then we also did something with the text size over here. So um, here we've got uh, just this 40 is the base font size. And we say basically take the, the number of frames and then current frame and work out um, like basically scale the font size according to how um, long we've been dwelling at the point. So once it's been dwelling for 90 frames, then it will draw it at 40. And when it's dwelling for one frame, it will draw it at you know, 0 0.1 or something like that. So that's another example of how we use those project variables. And then the, th the last example is in the map decoration. You'll see in the corner of the map here, I'm showing some status information. So we can see that in the decorations for the copyright label here, and I've got, unfortunately, I can't zoom this one, but I've got a, an expression here, which basically just compiles all of those different um, variables into one kind of easy to read um, string like that. So um, and then just to show on the disk here, um, uh, if we look at the, um, the files it generates, it just generates um, one frame per you know, incremental move, and then uh, if, I d if I open this folder, and have a look at one of those frames like this, you can see that um, if, if I scroll down the list, like you'll see, um, <laughs> it's like a stop motion animation. You can see his name is getting smaller and smaller as I'm zooming in. And that's basically the movie is just collating all those frames together. You can also see the um, the label changing for each one. So I'm on frame 130 there, 129, and so on. And I'm at the third point, and so on. And then it will generate, um, in this folder as well, it will generate the um, the video. You can see a higher quality here. It's the preview in the, um, in Q just sort of squashes it up a bit, but um, it's actually a pretty nice quality. So that's the first look. I will probably do a follow-up um, video like this showing the globe generation, and I've got that working. And uh, it's not published on the on the plugin repository yet because I'm still busy refining things and uh, trying to make it work well with large data sets and so on. But I hope that it will inspire people to make moving interesting moving cartography rather than just these sort of static maps that we kind of got, got used to in the GIS world and can actually take um, take your work and for example make rivers that wiggle <laughs> as, as you know as time passes or um, waves lapping up to the shore and these kind of things so that's it thank you for watching it's a very short one for me normally I ramble on for an hour but today I just wanted to quickly give you an update on what I've been working on and uh, we'll catch you next time. Rock on, QGIS.